Which one is the most orange? Oh, what the world? That's pretty frustrating, right? But you know what's not frustrating? Well, our new video is coming out here on YouTube. Now, here's a mini sample before we get today's lecture started. Fibrillation fireworks is the best way to remember V-Fib, the most deadly rhythm of all time. One of only two rhythms that you actually defibrillate or shock. Now, the other one is pulseless v tack So, what is V-Fib? Well, ventricular fibrillation is a chaotic pattern of electrical activity in the ventricles in which electrical impulses arise from many different foci. All right, guys, before we get started, don't forget to do two things. First of all, subscribe right here so you can see all of our new videos coming out here on YouTube first before they get locked in our video vault at simplenursing.com. And also click right up there to your free demo to our new quiz bank, as well as 1,200 videos not here on YouTube. All right, guys, let's get our oldies webcam video started right here. Simpledition.com. So right now we're going to be going over calcium channel blockers and how they help to reduce um, hypertension or high blood pressure in your body. We really take the pressure off of that heart and off of that um, basically helping your heart to um, not use so much energy as it's pumping. So one thing you have to know about calcium channel blockers is that it's an anti-hypertensive medication. So calcium channel blockers are usually uh, drugs that end in pine. So, let's see here, P-I-N-E. Um, for instance, um, your drugs that end with the word pine, just like beta blockers are the ones that, the medication that end with the uh, LOL. So like, um, uh, metroprolol and caridolol, but um, calcium channel blockers end in pine. But one of the biggest calcium channel blockers that is used in the hospitals is, let me see, cardizem. And cardizem is really used with uh, patients with, um, have really high blood pressure, they usually put on a cardizem drip. So right now I'm going to show you guys the mechanisms of how Calcium channel blockers really relieve the pressure off that heart and really help your heart to uh, give it an easy, smooth contraction. So let's get into it here. So let's do some basic anatomy physiology. So here's your heart. There you go. Mm -hmm. Now your heart, now the heart's main responsibility is to pump blood, correct? It's basically like a pump in your car. Your uh, fuel pump pumps fuel to the rest of the car. The heart does the same thing but with blood. And blood's main responsibility is to pump nutrients as well as oxygen to the rest of the body. Because without oxygen, your body um, usually, I'm oh, sorry, your body doesn't usually die, your body does die. So, we all know that veins vacuum deoxygenated blood back to the heart to be reoxygenated through the lungs. And arteries are pumped blood, oxygenated blood, away from the body. So arteries away, veins vacuum back. Now the main pump that really pushes this oxygenated blood out to the rest of the body starts in that left ventricle. And that's why this left ventricle has to be big. It has to be bigger than the rest of the aspects of the heart to really pump blood to the rest of the body, and get everything oxygenated. So here's a question for you. The blood is pumped from the left ventricle through the aorta into the peripheral veins and the peripheral um, vessels. Now, if there's pressure, 
and if these peripheral vessels, these arteries, are really, really stiff, that causes more pressure and more, um, more energy used by the left ventricle to really push against that resistance. Just like if you're going to push open a door, and the door is really heavy, there's a lot of resistance on the other side of that door, you'd have to use a lot more energy, a lot more oxygen, a lot more um, uh, energy just to push that door open. So if there was less resistance, and it would be a lot easier for you, and a lot easier for your heart, your heart would not be pushing as much. And really, your heart needs to last you for your lifetime. So we really want to take the pressure off your heart and bring down the blood pressure and that is what calcium channel blockers do. So let's take a closer look at the vessels of your heart and how we become less um, resistive in your blood vessels. So if we take a big picture of the epithelial cells of the blood vessels and really blew it up like this, we know that the cells of a blood vessel kind of look like a city. So if we blew it up here, and we took a big picture of this peripheral vessel, the artery, we know that the cell looks more like a city. If you guys haven't seen that lecture that I have about the cell being a city, it's really actually fun. Because we know every cell really operates like a city. Because every cell has a walls, like city walls. Every cell has a city hall where all the decisions are made. Every cell has a uh, cleaning department, which really cleans up the city, also known as a trash department. Every cell has kind of a post office that sends messages out and receives messages, kind of like a post office of your city. But the big thing right now we're, we're talking about is the city gates. And these gates are called channels of your cell. So we can say that these gates bring enzymes into the cell and also release enzymes from the cell. And the big channel that we're talking about here is calcium. So why do we want to block calcium from getting into the cell? It's very simple to understand. What does calcium do? So if calcium is blocked from getting into the cell, it's going to make your cell less hard. Because what is calcium and calcification? Calcium and calcification makes things hard. If you think about your bones, mom always tells you to drink more milk, right? Or uh, eat a lot of stuff that really makes those bones strong. We know that bones, here's your bone, like a little dog bone, is made up primarily of calcium. That really makes things hard. Now, do we want really hard cells? If the cells are really hard, it's going to make all these blood vessels, I'm sorry, all the, all the cells in this blood vessel system really, really hard, causing more pressure on that left ventricle to push against. Um, my dad was an LAPD for over 30 years, and he was saying that one of the biggest things that um, really makes bulletproof glass bulletproof is not that they make the glass thicker, it's just that they actually infuse the glass with electrolytes like calcium and another one being potassium. And it makes the um, molecular structure of glass so tight that bullets can't get through. So, if we're infusing calcium into that cell, we're really actually causing those cells to be bulletproof really, really hard, and those bricks, those cells that make up the vessel, really, really hard and really, really rigid. If we're blocking the calcium from entering the cell, and how do we block these? We block the channels where the cell, where the calcium enters the cell. We're blocking this bulletproofness. We're blocking things that make the cell hard. So then we have more flexible cells, more flexible blood pressure, more flexible um, highways of the heart. And it's really easy now for the left ventricle to push 
because as that uh, left ventricle pushes, the arteries expand, they stretch, and they relax. They stretch and relax. So the left ventricle now, there's less pressure as it's pushing against vessels that are able to expand and relax. If we have calcium that's really just crowded in this cell, really having a bulletproof cell. And that resistance now is so high that the left ventricle has to really push and really, really um, cause a lot of cardiac output and a lot of stroke volume and really work hard to get blood out to the rest of the body. Because these vessels are so hard now that it's not really expanding. The vessels aren't stretching and they're not relaxing. They're really stiff. So a way for your body to uh, reduce energy output from that left ventricle and really cause that left ventricle to have the most cardiac um, output and the least amount of energy possible is to block these calcium channels. So as we block the calcium channels, the heart becomes a lot softer, I'm sorry, the vessels become a lot softer and a lot more elastic. So if you don't want bulletproof vessels and you want those vessels to be more elastic, we have to really block these calcium because obviously calcium makes bones hard. We don't want hardness being in our vessels especially when that left ventricle is pushing against it and having to push all the oxygen out to the rest of the body. So hopefully that makes sense now in terms of calcium channel blockers and why they reduce blood pressure from high blood pressure, hypertensive states, down to uh, something more regulatory for your body to uh, adapt to and really bringing the pressure off of that left ventricle. So hopefully this helps. Uh, if you haven't picked up your copy of the Pathophysiology Bible. We have over 70 concept maps for you, ready to go for your next concept map or for your next clinical day. It's all covered in the Pathophysiology Bible. You're going to cut your study time uh, by about 200%. And this Pathophysiology Bible is amazing because you have 70 different concept maps with nursing output outcomes, uh, our interventions, signs and symptoms, pathophysiology, for the top 70 diagnoses of why people are admitted into the hospital. So pick up your copy of the Pathophysiology Bible, the concept maps, and hopefully this uh, calcium channel blocker lecture helped you. So next lecture, guys, we're going to be going over uh, nitroglycerin and how vasodilators really take uh, pressure off the heart as well. All right, guys, thanks for watching only one part in our full video here at simplenursing.com. If you guys click the link right here, you can get access to our full course as well as our new quiz bank, which is really nifty. And also, guys, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel right here. And last but definitely not least, a big thank you to our script team and nursing family who helped us put together all these nifty videos.